Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Solutions and today I'm going to be talking to you about IgA nephropathy and why I believe that it's a perfect example for an integrative medicine approach to kidney disease. In IgA nephropathy, genetics, epigenetics, environmental factors, the leaky gut and dietary factors converge together to cause this disease and we're going to talk about this in a simplified way in, in this video. I know our blogs has been becoming more complex so uh, the purpose of this video is to make things more simple. So let's do this. So before we do this let's talk a little bit about what is IgA and IgA is uh, a, a protein that is uh, a group of uh, part of a group of proteins called immune globulins. These uh, proteins function as soldiers to help defend our bodies from invading uh, foreign bodies, uh, microbes or others. And IgA is specific because it actually functions as a first line of defense in the lining of the lungs the sinuses, the saliva, and in the gut. So pretty much any invading organism coming from the environment, whether it's from air and through food, dietary sources, or others, it's going to be uh, dealing first with IgA because it's the first line of defense. And what is IgA nephropathy? And uh, IgA nephropathy is really particularly is, is a fancy name for uh, a, a disease, a kidney disease that really caused by IgA. So a trigger that uh, can cause the body to cause an abnormal type of IgA that end up going to the kidneys and causing inflammation and end up with kidney failure, unfortunately. So in essence, what is happening in IgA nephropathy is that there is a trigger uh, that's causing the body to form an abnormal IgA molecule. And not everybody will form this abnormal IgA. And that really depends on the genetic background of the, of the person. So uh, there's a trigger, there's a genetic background, combination together, uh, an inflammation in the gut can end up producing that IgA, abnormal IgA that end up circulating in the blood. The body start producing uh, immune complexes or body start to defend itself against this abnormal IgA that is recognizing as a foreign molecule and that the, those complexes that are formed end up depositing in the kidneys causing inflammation causing scarring and uh, end up with kidney disease and when you talk about the triggers there are three triggers that come into mind one food sensitivities uh, and and this has been well established since the 80s that Gluten, soy, lectin has been associated with abnormal production of IgA and leading to IgA nephropathy. Number two, there's also a microbial imbalance in the gut. So dysbiosis has also been studied and, and has been associated with uh, development of abnormal IgA and leading to IgA nephropathy. And third, heavy toxin metals such as cadmium has been linked to, um, to the development of IgA nephropathy. E even glyphosate, actually, that we see in, in, uh, used in, in herbicides uh, has been associated with uh, development of abnormal IgA. But not everybody who's exposed to these triggers develop IgA, abnormal IgA, and does not develop IgA nephropathy. So what's interesting is that there's another piece of this to this puzzle uh, and it turns out that there are genetic uh, risks that put the patient at risk for developing abnormal IgA. And, and what's interesting is that there's a lot of SNPs that uh, were found, and we, we talked about SNPs in previous videos that uh, we talked about uh, epigenetics, so go back and, and look into that video. Um, but what is interesting is that those SNPs are in genes that are associated with uh, intestinal uh, permeability and uh, intestinal defense and the, and the buildup of the intestinal barrier and also related to uh, genes that are associated with inflammatory bowel disease. So these SNPs end up causing abnormal trafficking of abnormal IgA into the bloodstream. And like I mentioned before, that will lead to development of uh, body's defense mechanism which cause other immune complexes that attack this abnormal IgA 
and this complex that forms end up depositing in the kidneys and leading to kidney uh, inflammation and scarring. So when you think about this from a conventional medicine approach, conventional medicine has always been approaching IgA with blood pressure control, uh, renin angiotensin system blockade, uh, general uh, use of steroids and uh, fish oil, for example, to decrease inflammation, decrease proteinuria, and decrease the progression of kidney disease. When conventional medicine realized that the problem in IgA nephropathy is in the gut, guess what they did? They are working on developing a specific steroids that goes and target the uh, end part of the gut to decrease the inflammation there. So that's the approach, uh, uh, that's the conventional medicine approach. But a more integrative approach to IgA nephropathy will actually personalize the care of the IgA patient by doing three major things. One is identifying and eliminating the dietary or environmental factors that are leading and triggering the formation of an abnormal IgA. Number two is assessing for and, and, and addressing dysbiosis in the gut. And number three is capitalizing on epigenetic modification that can help uh, the body or can help us decrease the expression of the SNPs that, are, that lead to IgA upregulation and uh, abnormal IgA formation. Together, this approach with uh, the conventional approach of you know, getting the blood pressure under control and so on can help focusing on the root cause of IgA and improve outcome for those patients. For more information, please follow us at www.inkidney.com. Subscribe to our channel. If you like this uh, video, please put a like and uh, press on the bell so that you can get notified of new videos. I uh, would love to hear from you, so free, feel free to comment uh, below and, and follow us.